We are just days away from a rare celestial event, a total eclipse of the sun. On April 8th, more than 31 million people from Texas to Maine will be in the prime location to experience this suntastic event. Even if you're outside the path of totality, though, you'll see a partial eclipse where the moon will look like it's kind of taking a bite of the sun, almost like a Pac-Man sort of look. Joining us now is Gina DiBraccio, Deputy Director of Heliophysics Science Division of NASA, to tell us more about this exciting experience. Gina, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So the eclipse is a major viewing event. How can viewers who are in the path enjoy this? Right. So if you're in the path of totality, what that means is that you're going to witness that full total eclipse. So when this solar eclipse happens, the moon crosses between the Earth and the sun. And when you look up into the sky at that moment of totality, you'll see the sun completely blocked by the moon so that you can actually view that upper atmosphere of the sun, which is known as the solar corona. And that's something that we can't see with our eyes on a day to day basis. Now, in Boston, we are not in totality. I think we're at about 93% or so. What can we expect? That's here? right. Yeah, so so for the partial eclipse, I mean, at 93%, you're so close to that totality, but you're not quite there, which means that you'll see most of the sun covered by the moon, but but not the full thing. So you won't get the full effect. However, it's going to be it's going to look to you like a really big chunk of the the sun has been bitten out by the moon, and you'll just kind of see that crescent sun that remains. So you'll still get a lot of changes in the atmosphere. Uh, you'll get to feel the the nature changing around you. Uh, but you'll still need to use that proper kind of safety gear with the, the eclipse viewing glasses for the partial eclipse. Do you know what are you most excited about for this eclipse? Oh, for me, so I, I've had the opportunity to see the 2017 total solar eclipse that crossed through the U.S. And then back in October, I got to see the annular eclipse. And what I've learned from those is that each eclipse, the experience is very different. So to really compare how each eclipse feels, both who I'm surrounded by, but also where I am, uh, I'm really excited to see how this upcoming total eclipse compares to those previous experiences that I've had. So I've never been able to experience a total solar eclipse. I'm actually traveling to Dallas for this. Oh, great. Crossing my fingers that I get some clear sky. Yeah, for but, Texas weather. <laughs> yeah, let's cross our fingers. But I've heard that it's almost like a life-changing, almost spiritual experience. Is that kind of what you felt on either of the previous ones you visited? That's that's right. I mean, it's really hard to describe the feeling that you get when you're witnessing this. Um, it does kind of feel like an out-of-body experience and something that isn't actually reality and happening. Um, in fact, when the, the annular eclipse took place in October, I was part of the NASA broadcast and my co-host and I, as we were watching, we both got a little emotional um, unexpectedly during our broadcast because it is just something that, you know, you don't get to experience all the time and it feels like a special event. Now, I know that people have been forecasting and predicting eclipses for thousands of years. How can we predict these type of eclipses so far ahead of time? Right. So we have a, a really good handle on the knowledge that we need to predict these eclipses. And what happens, as I mentioned, you know, an eclipse, a solar eclipse occurs when the moon crosses between the Earth and the sun. So that means we have to have knowledge of the moon's orbit, how far away it is from the Earth, because that will dictate what type of eclipse you get, whether you get that full total eclipse, or when the moon is a little farther, you'll get an annular eclipse, which means you're left with a ring of fire in the sky. So we basically need to know how and when the Earth and the moon will align with the sun. And since we know all of that information, um, we can calculate it pretty far out just to understand when these eclipses will occur and what part of the Earth will be facing the sun so we know what locations will view them as well. Now, as a meteorologist, I have storms growing up that I remember that really kind of solidified my path into the career that I'm in now. What do events like eclipses do for the future of astronomy? Oh, so I think eclipses are great ways to engage, you know, the broader community and the public. And it's a way for people to really get involved and hopefully inspire the next generation of scientists, whether it is somebody interested in working on science in the Earth's upper atmosphere and just seeing how the eclipse impacts the atmosphere, or somebody that wants to become a solar physicist one day, getting the having the ability to really see that outer corona of the sun, that upper atmosphere. Um, 
we're looking for this as an opportunity for the public to get involved and hopefully inspire those minds for the future. Now, on that same note, I know that um, diversity in science and STEM subjects is super important as a woman yourself and the role that you're in. What can you say to those young girls who may not have ever been able to see themselves going to the moon or studying a science? What do you say to them? Oh, I love this question. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's all about persistence and the fact that, you know, anything that I want to do, I know that I can do it as long as I put my mind to it. So, so really what I want to say to these girls is that, you know, if this is your goal and, and you're interested in getting in science, you absolutely can. Try to find people along the way that will support you, find good mentors, look at your family members for help or friends, um, and just, you know, never give up. Awesome, awesome. And uh, my last question uh, for you, later this year, uh, NASA's Parker Solar Probe will make history when it flies closer to the sun than any other spacecraft. What are we looking for in that mission and what sort of findings do you hope will spur maybe future explorations too? Yeah, so with the Parker mission, every time it flies by the sun, it's getting closer and closer. So this December, it will fly within 4 million miles of the sun. Now that might sound far, but the earth is about 93 million miles away from the sun. So Parker is flying through the upper atmosphere of the sun, the solar corona, and it's able to really understand, it's looking at the physics of how energy is transferred in this region, how particles are accelerated and heated away from the sun that eventually interact with earth. And so so what we're really looking for here is to understand that fundamental physics of how things are operating on the sun, and that will help us to understand how other things work in our solar system as well. Awesome. Are you going to be traveling for the eclipse? I will be going to Texas too. So I will be in Kerrville, Texas, a part of the NASA broadcast, in fact. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we look forward to that broadcast. If people want to tune into the NASA broadcast, where can they go? Yeah, so check out go.nasa.gov forward slash Eclipse Explorer, and that will have the interactive map, and then it will also guide you to where the broadcast is located. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gina DeBracho, Deputy Director of Heliophysics at NASA. Really appreciate your time, and let's cross our fingers for that clear Texas forecast, right? Yes, sounds good. Thank awesome. you.